Hi, welcome back, and uh, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make a 3D graph in Illustrator. Uh, it's a pretty easy one, but it's uh, it's good to use to put in reports and that sort of thing. Uh, anyway, uh, as you can see, I already have a, uh, a pie chart on my toolbar here, and how you get that on there is by going to Object, Graph, and then Type. And then you can select uh, one of these types of graphs, and it'll show up in your toolbar. Uh, you can kind of customize them here, but I like to more customize them uh, while, after I make them. So uh, I'll select OK. I'll go to my uh, tool, <coughs> my toolbar over here. And I'll select my pie graph tool, uh, and you can make whatever kind of graph you want. And a lot of them you can do, use the same technique on, but. Uh, for this one, we'll use the pie graph. I'll uh, make a selection there, and you can see that there's your basic pie graph. Um, so if I can, I'll zoom in here in a second. Um, you add your quantities in in these boxes here, and you can add as many as you want. There's also an option to uh, upload a, your some sort of a spreadsheet or something. If you can, or if you want to import those settings, that will also make a chart. A chart. So we'll just select some random uh, numbers here. Fifty, sixty, sixty-nine, seventy-four, eighty. And Okay. I made it add up to 100%, but uh, it'll work even if it doesn't. Uh, maybe. Okay. Um, so there we go. We have our pie chart. Okay, so now the next thing that you uh, you do is uh, you can ungroup this. You can uh, hold down uh, Control Shift and press G to ungroup it, and just select Yes. Uh, or you could go to Object Ungroup, and that would have done the same thing if you have them all selected. Now here, uh, I guess I didn't get ungroup. There we go. Now it's ungrouped. Okay. So now I'm just dragging these uh, kind of away from each other just to kind of see what we have. <clears throat> and uh, at this point, you can change the colors of the graph. You can pick your colors. I like to get rid of the strokes uh, just by going over to your colors here, getting on the strokes and selecting none. We'll just get a few colors going here, and then we'll make it 3D. Okay, just a couple more. Okay, yeah, I'll do brown. Whatever. Okay, so now we got all our colors here. Uh, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to make them all 75% uh, opacity. And I'll just click on them separately and do that. Get them all down. The reason you do this is uh, when you make them opaque, and then in the next step when we make them 3D, you'll be able to see through them a little bit, and it uh, it makes it for a more interesting graph, in my opinion. Okay, so now the next thing that we are going to do, and I'm just going to move them a little bit closer together, and I'll zoom in a little bit for you guys too. next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and make them uh, 3D objects. And What you do is you uh, click, drag, and select all of them. And you go to uh, Effect up at the top, down to 3D, and then Extrude and Bevel. And uh, you can click Preview Mode here, and that, that'll show you pretty much what you're going to have. I want to change the perspective a little bit, and you just do that by clicking on this square here, and you can move it around and give it any perspective that you want pretty much. I think something like that will probably be 
Yeah, something like that will be pretty good, probably. You can change your extrude depth so that it's either uh, thinner or very thick. Um, I think I'm going to make it just a little thinner. Something like that is probably pretty good. And then uh, I think I'm ready to select OK. And it will render those just that way. Uh, the next thing that you do is you just click on these and put them back in place and you kind of just have to click and drag and it's kinda just make them look good try to get the space the space even between the objects and I'm just going to do this really quick Okay, and you know you you know what looks good, so you can kind of mess around with it a little bit. The more you spread them out and give them a little room, that sort of thing. But once you get them to something that looks pretty good, then you're, you're good. It does take a little bit of uh, tinkering with it to look perfect, you know. But uh, but you can certainly do that. Okay, um, I'm gonna kind of stop there. I mean, certainly you can get this to you know better proportions. You can enlarge some things if you want. Um, move some things around. Anyway, the next thing that I would do is uh, <coughs> just add a little drop shadow to kind of complete the the, the, the the chart. Let's just actually move this one down a little bit more. Okay, that looks pretty good. So now I'm going to go ahead and just... Uh, create a little drop shadow on there and what you'll do is you'll select everything and you can actually regroup them if you want and you can just press control G or go to object and group and then uh, and you'll go to effect uh, stylize and then drop shadow and I'll I like I'll, I'll probably leave it I actually already uh, was messing around with this a little bit earlier so the settings that I have on here are pretty good the way that I want them uh, that's actually pretty strong for a drop shadow a lot of people like a strong drop shadow like that. I'm I like mine to be a little bit more subtle. I'm gonna try 25 percent. Yeah, that's pretty good. Um, I like that. So there you go. You pretty much you have your graph. You could take some text and write your percentages on there uh, if you want, and kind of you know just lay the lay the numbers over like that, and that would be uh, pretty good, you know. Uh, anyway, that's about it. Uh, I hope you learned something. Thanks for watching. Uh, please subscribe. Uh, tell your friends and all that good stuff. Uh, thank you very much.